stop round. Uh, basically what happens, you're speaking, I don't like it, I'm going to stop the time, and we're going to talk about why I don't like it, and then you're going to fix it, and then we'll restart the time. Okay, so five minutes of speaking time is going to probably be more like seven or eight minutes of real time. Okay, so that's why... I'm going to be interrupting you. So if I, like, give you this one, it means you fucked up. Um, so, uh, or, 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 I have a suggestion, um, is the gentler way of saying it. Uh, yeah, and I'll stop the clock, and then, um... Then we'll get you guys to start, when we're done talking about it, you guys start speaking and we'll start the clock, okay? Um, also, Bell, so this will be real time, so this will still be one, four, and five, okay? Everybody clear on that? So the bell doesn't mean stop. Don't don't freak out if I ring the bell. That means you're doing good. That's just something that happens in debate, okay? But yeah, I'll, I'll make it clear that you need to cut it. Are we still doing POIs? Yeah, everything's normal, but we're just going to stop it. I might stop POIs depending on the POIs and stuff, too. You'll just, so. like, interrupt us when you want us to stop? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, it'll be rude, and I apologize ahead of time, but for this to function, that's how it has to go. All right, uh, what was the motion? Uh, this house uh, used those sentences. Oh, yeah. Cool. And then, uh, seal time, we, don't need, we shouldn't use those for 10 seconds. You can if you want to. Yeah, yeah actually, you, you time yourself doesn't going to matter, because you're going to be... Time is a minute each, or 20 seconds? Yeah, minute each. Yeah, minute each. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. No pressure. Now see, I see myself as a scientist. I currently work in a vaccination lab, and we work on critical projects that drastically affect, pu affect public health as a whole. We make vaccines. But now the only way to really tell if one of these vaccines, one of these drugs is going to work, is by using human trials. Now that's where we have an issue, because in countries like the United States, it is virtually impossible. That's why right now, in our, one of our new drugs, looking at basically type 6 secretion systems of bacteria, which is a method of uh, infection, we have to do it in Shanghai. Because it is simply impossible to do these products in places like the United States, in these Western countries. And this is a problem. That is why we believe that by using those sentenced to the death penalty for medical experimentation, we can drastically better the, basically the lives of people in the world because we progress medical science more drastically. Now we start off by defining this house as the United States and Western liberal democracies overall. And we use medical experimentation as experiments done by research institutions with something like NIH approval, which is basically backing from a reputable organization that is making sure these experiments are humane, not fatal, and not torturous. So we are not torturing these people just for fun and seeing what's going to happen. We are doing real scientific experiments to get real scientific benefit and actually help people throughout the world. Yes? Given that the solution already exists, as you explained, wherein people from Shanghai are used for medical experimentation, why do you now want to include people who are sentenced to the death penalty? Because, see, what you see is that these are often very uh, select populations, because when you do test with just people from one group, uh, from one area in mostly impoverished, uh, when you do a human trials in a uh, group with just one type of impoverished people, you often get different results than you would get if you use the actual people that are going to be using the drug. For example, when you use TB okay. drugs, so, this is fine so far, but what, what's, what's one big concern you have to, con you know, what, what's one big decision you have to make for this, for this motion from opening gov? It's maybe implied, but a lot of teams wouldn't do it. Um, Anybody? No. Pre, 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 probably pre-death penalty. Yeah, probably pre-death pre, 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 pre penalty. But what, what, what would it be? Are you forcing them? Oh yeah. Oh, is it, well, is it yeah, mandatory? So, are you? Are, is it voluntary or mandatory? Oh, mandatory. Okay, so so you see, like, it, it, I think it's implied by the motion, but right. you, you know, like a lot of teams okay, would sure. come up there and oh, well, they I, can I choose it, it, or you know. I think it'd be because like our basically we go down to the whole point where they they lost the right to choose. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be, it but you see how that's like a huge but thing, no, right? I do understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I would I would definitely include that in the model. Okay. Um, and, and also, are you, um, the other thing, just for efficiency's sake, are you going to be bringing up that point that you're using to answer his POI later in your speech, or is that something that's different? Uh, no, I guess that was just... Okay, yeah. okay that's fine then. Okay. It, it seems like if it's something like... Because when you said Shanghai, I thought the same thing. Like, why do we need it if we're already doing it? Right. So well, I was just... It, I mean, it's a good point. I should have addressed this. Yeah. Address yeah. Okay. I also just wouldn't tell them that. If okay. they can come up with it on their own, good for them. But I wouldn't give them information that... Right. Your, that's your case yeah. yeah. Okay. Go ahead. You're so one, should I keep answering? That was, yeah, yeah. Sorry. You're 146. Yeah. And let's just assume that he said it's no choice. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now what you see the major issues is that when you're not using the actual population people that are going to be using the drug, you often get different results because people have different genetic bases, they have different responses to different drugs, and therefore it's vastly different. For example, when you're trying to come up with a new TV vaccine... Okay, stop, stop. That's, that's clear. We're clear on that, right? Because okay. it's not a major tenant in your case. It's just the answer to a POI. 
Okay. It's a good response, right? So okay. you don't want to spend, like, you've already spent, like, 30 seconds on that response. Right. Okay. So sure, just sure. boom, go to your case. Sure. I, I think you're good right there. Yeah. Different populations, different. Right. Okay. So now, what we see is that since it's not torture, since it's not fatal, all we are getting is the progression of society. What we believe this debate is fundamentally going to boil down into is going to be whether or not the progression of medical science outweighs basically the prisoner's right to choose whether or not he partakes in this uh, these medical trials. And we believe that it fundamentally does because the progression of medical science directly benefits human life. And that is why it is critical to uh, progress uh, medical science and by using this population which we have so far untapped. Yes. Yeah, don't take it. Okay. Uh, we move on to... So, so just, just because I mean, you're, you're just getting in, that's kind of like you're setting up the framework, right? Right. You're at 2.30 right now and you've finished setting up the framework and you already answered one of the POIs, it's probably just not a good time. You need to get to the arguments, right? Okay, So sure. that's why I would say no. Okay, so now we go on to the one contention I will touch upon in this speech, which is basically the progression of science, and I want to give the real evidence as to why we progress science through human trials specifically. What you see is that when we don't have the human trials as we expressed earlier, we don't get to see what it's going to act in humans. But this is critical, because by actually looking at humans, not only do we have new drug creation, which my second speaker will talk about, what we have is we understand critical diseases that we so, hard, so far have never understood. And we want to bring up an empirical example. We want to really show to you how we get to learn new things about these critical diseases. And we look to the example of cholera. Now, the actual way that we learned about this was in Maryland, the Johns Hopkins forced their medical students to partake in a clinical trial, where they were all infected with cholera, and they all had to look through the results. Now, what this did was this taught us tons of things about cholera. It taught us the nature of the infection, where that they gave over a thousand times the expected ID50, which is the, infect the necessary dose to give an infection, and they could not establish it because you realize you need to neutralize stomach acid, which shows that that's something completely different. We've never known about how cholera functions. We learned that stomach acid, if acidic enough, can actually neutralize cholera. We learned a new thing about it. We additionally learned the nature of the toxin in that since okay, people... What are you doing right now? I'm going to establish basically all these benefits and then I'm going to tie back to why... We but what are you doing right now? Exactly. You're just giving like way more right. things about cholera that we need to necessarily <laughs> right. know. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I get it. There was right. cholera and then like we didn't know anything about it. Now we know a shit ton about it. Right. Okay, cool. So you're, again, especially five minute speech, but just in general, like time is precious, right? So right. efficiency and time is a huge decision making thing that has to happen. And, and so like you could be using this... Uh, so, you know, when you say, like, you're going to talk to us about the benefits to humanity and progression of science, I'm also wondering if you're ever going to get to the point about um, why the right to choose is being trumped. And especially because right. there's only a minute and ten seconds left to your speech, I don't think you're ever going to get to that. Okay, so, yeah, well, so, uh, we were going to leave that to the split, and then she was going to go okay. into the ethics of it. Okay, Yeah. So, I don't, it, so, but you see, like, there's so much stuff to cover right, that's right. more important than, like, continuing on the cholera. Sure, Like, sure. so same idea. I get the cholera thing, then you can, you can, you can move on. You don't think that's an establishment of well, it, the, like the specific, like it's stomach acid this, and it's this, this. Uh, there's, there's a certain amount of like wow factor, like oh, this guy really knows. What the fuck yeah, I thought that, that I got that the John Hopkins, Hopkins when John Hopkins like it, like in, in what is right. that called inseminated? Yeah, <laughs> their, um, their students. Right. I was right. like, okay, cool, he's got it. You know, or or even the medical, right. like the response to the. Yeah, that was kind of like a whole one, just like make it look like I know way more than yeah, that. That's what I thought. That yeah. was like what I was going for. I don't, it, no, yeah, but I kind of buy it already, and okay. I'd rather you made arguments than like, oh, this guy's really yeah, smart. Yeah, at some point you're showing off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's God, he knows more than everybody else. I wish he'd say something. Right. right. <laughs> you know, that's kind of where that's kind of where I'm at. Sure. So okay. just be careful about that. Yeah. Okay. So so cholera, we got it, and then from cholera, you go. So what we see is that, as we have shown you, is that by enrolling people in clinical trials, sometimes against their will, what we do is we drastically progress science as a whole. We drastically understand new things about these diseases. We make new understandings that help us understand epidemiological uh, importances, impacts of certain diseases, how to stop them, how to change them. What we do is we basically can better the lives of people everywhere. By taking away the right to choose from a small percentage of people, we increase the, uh, the betterment, basically, of the lives around the world because we can help them. We can give them the medical attention. So yes, these prisons have already been incarcerated. Yes, they've already lost their right to choose many of these, uh, their normal choices, like what they can eat, where they can go, because they have made these decisions that have given them the death penalty. Really exciting. And, 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 and my partner's going to tell you more about that also. Okay. Because cause you kind of leave the judge hanging there, you see? Right, so like, right, if yeah. you at least promise me that it's going to come up more, right. I'm like, okay, cool, you touched on it, but I'm going to hear more, so I'm good with it. Okay. You know? right. And my partner will go more into the ethical implications, but what you have to see is that 
what we are doing is we are directly benefiting science. We directly benefit people around the world, not just in the United States. We help people across the world. And that is a significant benefit. That is a reason why you definitely should vote for the government. Is that close to time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, do all those make sense? Questions? Any of that? Yeah, no, those. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So and you can feel you like you kind of came, like, you finished right at the five. If I hadn't stopped you, like on the POI, right, probably right, 15 yeah. more seconds on that, the caller thing, maybe 15 more seconds, mm -hmm. you'd be 30 seconds over and you'd be really bunching up against that five minute mark. Right. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, So it hasn't been clear in this debate why those who have been sentenced to the death penalty should be forced to mandatorily like, be subjected to medical experimentation. We think this is specifically bad because it puts humans to subhuman categories and we think that at the end of the round you should um, view like, the impacts under a view of like deontology because we're talking about real human beings and at the point where you look at the consequences through a utilitarian framework, you don't understand that these people are conscious, they have pain, they um, um, they have reasoning abilities, and we think this is specifically wrong. But let's look at um, some rebuttals. Now, his first point is that these um, processes will be humane and torturous. But one, you don't specifically know this. If we're going through medical like experimentation, we're clearly experimenting on things. You don't know the like ramifications. That's why we're experimenting. So you don't know if it's going to be humane or put them through torture. Now, their first point is that um, humans like this creates new drug create. Um, this creates new drugs. But one, he doesn't really give you any reasons why the justice system should be intertwined with this. And two, we think that at the point where you make this mandatory, that's specifically bad because that doesn't give a choice for people. And these are people at the end of today's round. And three, while we agree that drug proliferation, the creation of drugs is good, there's no reason why it should be like forced on people who are subjected to the death penalty or why it should be mandatory. But let's look at some points of positive matter. Now, my first argument is at the point where you like use human beings for medical experiments against their will, you reduce human beings to subhuman categories and to the point where we're using this under a deontological framework, we think this is specifically bad. But let's look at the nature of medical experimentation. So who do we medically experiment on in the status quo? Rats, animals, flies, bugs to achieve like medical advancement and in the status quo it's voluntary. Now. What does medical experimentation do? It puts you through extreme pain and discomfort. It puts you through ailment and perhaps even death. We think this is specifically bad for a few reasons, but I'll take your POI. Yes, first of all, we want to point out you're fundamentally incorrect in three ways. One, we always use conscious animals that feel pain. For example, orangutans and chimpanzees. Two, we have shown that we, uh, we will already know if they have pain. Now, it's not incorrect. And third, what we see is that... 15 <laughs> okay, so human beings, I would say, are distinct from people who we medically like experiment on in the status quo, but I'll discuss that more. So what we can see is that this tre treatment is like treatment we put on animals, orangutans, chimpanzees, flies, animals, but at the point where you're putting this on human beings, this is specifically bad for two reasons. First, human beings are conscious beings with reasoning, not rats, not flies, and although they might be able to like feel pain, they don't have the reasoning capabilities that humans do, and furthermore, two human beings feel pain even more so than other animals and to the point where we have reasoning capabilities and we have the ability to feel extreme pain this is specifically bad because these people same, uh, same, th same thing I told him like you don't have to spend so much time on the difference between humans and animals like we, we kind of right off the bat okay, okay. Humans, so yeah okay so we think that this results in a dehumanization of the medical process and at the point where you put like human beings you equate, equate human lives to animal lives so this is specifically bad because it takes the judicial system and puts it like intermixes it with science science and we think this is bad because it doesn't take into account who humans are and how we're distinct from the, um, animals. And when you're viewing this round through a fr frame of framework of deontology, you're not acting in morality at the point where you are like putting humans onto animals, uh, animal levels. But let's look at the second main reason why you're not going to use people in the death penalty for medical experimentation in that the legal system and the scientific community are distinct and they should not be intermixed. So let's look at the nature of the legal system. Those people who are under the death penalty or who go through the political pro like the judicial process are under um are in it for justice. So we attempt to give each person their due. Let's look at the nature of the scientific community. The nature of the scientific community is for the betterment of humans through scientific advancement. At the point where you connect the two or supplying people for experimentation in the scientific community, this undermines what the legal system is specifically meant for. And we think this is specifically bad because the point of the legal system Hold on, is... Sorry. Uh, why, why, does it, why does it undermine that? 
because like you're like the point of the legal system is for justice, justice right. and the point of the scientific community is for human advancement. At the point where you're using like a like uh, an industry or like a political process that's right. for the per so what do you think Gov's argument for that is though? Who cares? No, like what? Why are you using people on the death penalty? So he, he said her split is going to be talking about why prisoners give up this right, right? Well, I think, like, the first argument answers that, like, and that we shouldn't be, like, these are still humans. But, like, the second mm -hmm. is, like, more addressing what, like, the point of the judicial system is in Which that, is, like... What, what are they going to say this? Well, these people, like, have already... It's giving them their due by putting them through. No, I don't know if they're going to use it as a punishment. What, so if justice is, like, you know, rehabilitation or that they took something away, they can give something back to society, right? Is that is that probably where they're gonna go? Can you, yeah, can you repeat that? If, if I were if I were guessing, you know, and he says the split's gonna be like these people have given up their rights, you know, and and, and they're in this situation. So you've taken something away from society if you're a prisoner, right? Mm -hmm. You're probably taking away something pretty bad if you're on the death penalty. But then now you have an opportunity to be to give that back to society through medical experimentation, right? Okay. Is that is that fair? I mean, that's yeah, probably that, where that's they're gonna fair. go. So so that seems to me like those two things are in line. Why why does justice and human progression? Because why, it's, why are those it's mandatory. Things? Okay. So, yeah. what's, um, what is that? Like, I, I don't know. Jail is mandatory. Like, at the point where you're forcing people to give back to society, like, when they're under the death penalty, that's wrong. Like, that's not justice. They're going to get put to death. I mean, so what's, see what I'm getting at? What's the difference between this and every, everything else is mandatory? The death penalty is mandatory. They can't be like, you know, you got the death penalty, and then the prisoner's like, ah, eh, no. I choose not to. Because that like fucks with them. I don't like like scientific experimentation. Like, is there a pr what are the P's? What are the P's? Is there one of the P's you can use to to P? What are the P's? Pre precedent, People. I think. Precedent. precedent. Even if you're on the death penalty, what are some things that we? Oh, oh, okay. So if you're on the we on prisoners right now. Okay, but not the... Yeah. Wait, even, not if, the if, even if you're on, like, the death penalty, you're still guaranteed certain li rights. So the rights before you die, you get a good meal, you get rest, so, you okay, so are before still you go So do you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So when, when you're breaking, like, there's justice, there's the idea of justice, but it's only allowed to go so far... So would the in argument to, be better, like, what is, like, the nature of people who are, like, under the Or the idea, like, like, what's the problem with utilitarianism? Is that... It, it uses people as, like, a means to an end, like, you don't understand. Right, so even though, you know, if we, if, you know, the reason I definitely is criticized is even though it does have utilitarian benefit, if you're on the other side, you're saying, like, we're not willing to go to that step. So even if we do have the death penalty, it doesn't mean that we're willing to throw out everything in between. So I think that it's important when you say, like, justice doesn't match progressive progression of human humanity through science. Uh -huh. I think it's important you talk about the precedent for where those two so things are. So is that like where I would discuss like what people in the death penalty are give like I, I don't know what I would Yeah, say. like like what we still don't take away from them even okay. though theoret you know, just because they're on the death penalty doesn't mean that we don't take care of them up until that point. Doesn't mean we don't like even though it's stupid, like sterilize the needle. Um, don't give them a meal. Don't you know these sorts of things. Like we still treat them with a certain because that's the difference between justice and just progression or benefit to society. Okay. You see, so we don't just, kill them in cruel and unusual ways. Yeah, because okay. you just keep saying, you know, there's a disconnect. There's a di it can't be that. It can't be that. It can't be that. But you know, make it more specific. Okay. So should I just? Your four I'll minutes. Yeah. So just do everything you were doing. Just throw in the specifics to make it tangible for us. Okay. So let's give an example of what people who are given the death penalty are given before they die. So people who are still given the death penalty are still given the right to clean sterilization needles. They're still given the right to a good night's sleep. They're still given the right to like a proper meal before they die. And that means we're not treating humans like like animals and we do value their rights and we do value their justice and we uphold their justice but at the point where you subject these people to medical experimentation that like strips them away of these specific rights that they've had in the past that sets a bad precedent that is not distinct with the justice like that we hold in the status quo and we think this is how like the scientific community and the legal system like provide a disconnect so at the end of the round you'll see that like we shouldn't be doing this because it reduces human beings to subhuman treatment and like it um goes against like a precedent of what justice is and what the legal system is and that's specifically wrong. Yeah, I got it. Video. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Can I, how do you feel about like knocking uh, during the round? Do you think we should not be festively or like not look for your partner's points? Uh, or like, 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 like,
I've seen some people that are like, yeah, yeah, that boy right there, that boy right there. And then I'm like, I stop listening to their partner and I start looking at them. Right. So I don't think it's super useful. It's fine. A little bit. It's like a little bit like on a major point. Shut up. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. But yeah, I mean, when you do this and you make me like do that, I'm not listening to your partner anymore. Right. So you don't think you should do this major point. Not a, maybe at the end of the point, you know? So yeah, just Real sad tone it down, yeah. Biddy is tall. Mr. Speaker, before I get into my arguments proper, I'm first going to rebut a few points brought about by side opposition here. Now, basically, we see the speaker from side opposition came here and said two things to you. First, that uh, somehow that doing these tests uh, renders these prisoners subhuman, and why the government should get involved. And I'm going to answer these two things before going on into my proper arguments. Now, the first thing she said was that it, uh, by testing the prisoners in this way, we're, making the, we're giving them subhuman status. Now, here's the thing. This is stuff that the government allows people to do anyway. It's stuff we normally pay people to do. And as my partner said here, it's according to the NIH guidelines. Uh, this means that if they are in pain, then the treatment will stop, the experimentation will stop. Human rights are not violated, and therefore it is not subhuman treatment. They are treated as humans, um, but they are just made to uh, go through these tests. And the second thing she said was that why should the government get involved? And here's the thing, the duty of the government is welfare maximization of its people. I'm going to show you later how, because the government has duty of, uh, like the duty of care that the government has to society is uh, to uh, try to benefit the people. So therefore the government does have the right to get involved. And I'm going to show you the benefits, but before I go okay. on. Okay, so, um, yeah, what do you, tell us what you're going to ask. Oh, like, but. she indicates that the status quo, like, already, like, solves, so, like, she indicates the status quo is already doing this, so either A, the status quo solves, or B, like, the status quo isn't doing it under a mandatory basis. And she right. Yeah, but, but could, could you, I mean, can, can we think yeah, about the two yeah. points that she just made and um, like see what's wrong with them? Oh. Well, you were saying that we already re do this, but we reimburse people? Mm -hmm. what, okay. what? Sorry? You're saying that we already do this, right, in the status quo, but you're also saying that we reimburse them when it's voluntary? Right? Uh, yeah. No, but, okay, what's her second point? What did she just say? Okay, the job of the government is to maximize welfare, right? Okay, but then what is she telling you? She's telling you it's not going to be this, it's not going to be that, we're, if it hurts a little bit, we're going to stop. Okay, are those two things not contradictory? So if, if, st if your stance is that we need progression and that we need to maximize you know, welfare and the government's duty is to get as much utility as possible, then why do you care about any of those things? I don't no, think no, it's no, fair no. at all because no. I mean that's yeah. already it's I'm, not but you guys chose to put the case no 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 but, 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 why, but why you make it? precedent is that in any in any child with any animals you cannot cause pain so no. I mean it's not it's, it's an unfair precedent to consider o that only if know. only if you guys have established that the point is to maximize welfare no 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 the point was why is the government getting involved in drug trials in the first place like why is this something right. the government is but you see why but answering it that way Okay. Do you see how you open yourself up to that? That's, so it's not the government. The government is not no, no. meant to maximize welfare, right? No. In that, why is it getting involved in drug trials at all, like scientific or medical research? Right. Why is it allowing this on prisoners? And she she said that the government has no right to get involved, and I'm saying right. the government does have a right to get involved, and this is why. But do you see, like, when you're rebutting her case, you're also it, it's your rebuttal still needs to fall in line with the positive material you guys are presenting. Does that make sense? Yes. So I, I think that you know, do you guys see where I'm getting at? Op? Um, so when you guys are running almost, when, when some of the rhetoric of your speech seems to be pure utilitarianism, but then the other half of the rhetoric of your speech is like, it's not that big of a deal because we still want, you guys need to decide where on the spectrum, okay? Um, and what's the term for that? What's the debate term? You don't know where you are, you haven't established a bright line. There's no bright line, okay? Where, where, what's the bright line? for what the government is allowed to do in the pursuit of maximizing welfare. You guys understand? That's really what this whole debate is, right? So um, if you guys aren't, so you see that, that's why it's a problem for you guys on Gov. If you don't establish the bright line, then Op can get up there and ream you, well, what about this, what about this, what about this, because I'm not sure where you guys stand. So just be careful about, when you're coming up with the speeches, be careful about, um, and then when she says two things, like one argument immediately after the other argument that are, contradictory like that, even if it's rebuttal and positive material. Um, that's something you guys got to be able to, to catch on. Um, so um, there has to be some 
toning down of that rhetoric, that utilitarian maximizing welfare rhetoric. Okay. Probably in prep time, but now that you're in the middle of speaking. Uh, yeah. Uh, in the past when these adopters like more extreme stances where they would just don't care. We only want welfare maximization or something of that sort. Mm -hmm. We've been told that we are fighting off more than we can chew, or this is mm -hmm. too extreme. Mm -hmm. You can allow for certain exceptions, or blah, blah, blah. I mean, we, this mm -hmm. has happened in the past. But yeah, I think it depends on the judge. Most of the good judges, I don't think, if you do it right, most of the good judges won't punish you on that. Um, but but yeah, but the, the important thing is that you've established a bright line. Okay, that we have a clear definition of this is okay, this is not okay, and then, no matter where you establish the bright line, that comes, there's going to be burdens with it. So if you establish a super soft bright line, what's the burden you get? Well, yeah, the or No, it's, it's clear. It's clear, but it's super soft. No, not soft like fuzzy, but soft like, we, like we we're not going to do anything bad. We don't really get any real tangible benefits. Good. No, you, no. You, get, you get hardly any benefits. But if you establish it super far over here, so, so no matter where you establish it, there's going to be problems, but the important thing is that you establish somewhere clearly and you know exactly okay. what, you're, what you're... So would it be something if I were to say like... Now, we believe that the government's job is to maximize the will for the people in along with human rights, uh, yeah. with yeah. obligation to human like rights. We do not an inhumane child. Yeah. So, so human rights might be a cool standard. Like, as long as we don't abuse a human right, we're taking away choice. Right? So, like, like I said, imprisoning right. them or the death penalty, uh, the death penalty is a human rights violation. So just imprisoning them in general <laughs> okay, is still bad. But, right. but like, so we're willing, to, we're willing to cause them pain. I think you have to be willing to cause them a little bit of pain. Right. You know, we're not going to torture them, but I mean, yes. if, if you, but when, the way you're saying it, it's like, oh, if it starts to hurt, God. literally, like, if it starts no, to hurt, I we'll mean, stop it. Well, in keeping with the guidelines on mm -hmm. when it starts to hurt, so we're just using that as kind of benchmark. So we're, like, we're conducting the trials, but we're not infringing on any human rights. Yeah, but I think so. you can go way farther than when it starts to hurt for human rights. Like, I mean, if, if, like, okay. if it'll kill them before they're supposed to be put to death... Um, then maybe you could stop it there. Or, <laughs> like, Wait, um, really? You think that you could, we could say like you basically just let them be in severe yeah, pain? Yeah, because you can't. I mean, otherwise, otherwise you're not maximizing utility, are you? So yeah, no. Um, okay. It, this, is your, <laughs> this is your. This is your. This is this is this is the decision you guys have to make. And again, I'm not telling you. I would. I would. I would just let them die personally. I'm not telling you you have to, but that's how I would run it, because then it's super easy to maximize welfare. I mean, rhetorically, if if we're going to kill them already, that's like the ultimate rights violation, and if we're willing to take away that rights violation, then we're willing to take away everything in between. Yeah, remember, they well, killed a cop. But that's, but that's not necessarily true, because then you can say that, but when they're killed, they're killed like, peacefully, as opposed to undergoing massive, like, torturous, like, a TB infection that results in their yeah. painful and yeah. slow death. Well, I think two things. One, if they've murdered, if they've murdered, I guess, I guess or we're raped, like we're having to be very nice. We yeah, it out, but. that's fine. If, if if they've murdered or or raped or somebody to the point where they get the death penalty, first of all, they made that choice for somebody else. That person was able to make a choice. So right off the bat, I mean, they've made this choice for somebody else. Not that bad. We're making it for them. Right off the bat, that's even. I mean, like, I know it sounds cold, but that's no, even. I, I agree. And then, I agree the, and then the second thing, the, the, <laughs> the more... I actually, I just, I just want to know... Right. Too much right. Well, and then the second thing is the more benefit that we can get medically, the more lives we save over here. So if your justification for hurting them at all is, is we're going to be able to save more people, hurting one person, saving tons of people, then almost hurting them a little bit for nothing, that's worse than killing them for a thousand lives over here if we're just counting you know so actually hurting them more to guarantee eff efficacy is, is, is more philosophically consistent on your side and is the moral high ground compared to hurting them less if that's the way that you want to go with it I was just saying that's how I would run it and I think I, I would win that um, if you want to run it so that, that, that's one example of it so if we stick to what we said right now is that we stay with human rights and like to that extent we try to maximize our welfare if, Given that we, yeah. we are so, so if you stick with human <laughs> rights, what benefit can you get? What okay. benefit can you get? Okay, so so my, my whole thing is that the only reason it works and it's okay is because of the NIH guidelines, right? So someone's looking over it. Mm -hmm. If you were to, to allow pain and stuff like that, then you have no actual body that would govern it because mm -hmm. no scientific organization would allow you to cause pain because they that's, don't. Yeah, okay. That's so fine. then that's so I mean, if they know anything about that, so I guess in your case, well, so if I were to run it your way, I would say that 
what we're talking about is the experiments right now that are cleared for human trial, and the reason they're not working isn't because we can't have humans, but just not enough people are signing up. Yeah. So we're just increasing the amount of people signing up. So the things that we're going to, the, on your side, it's everything that's still cool, everybody's happy with it, we just don't have enough people. So then it's going to severely limit the amount of diseases and, and experiments right. and things that you can do, mm -hmm. but there's a clear, so you see, like, that's the other end of the spectrum. Right. Right, okay. Here's that in the spectrum, here's that. But both of the two options I'm giving you are much clearer than this one in the middle where you're kind of contradicting yourself. Right. Yeah. So. No, I just brought it in because in response to yeah. whether the government has a right to get involved in it. Yeah, which is, but, and that's where you, you have to be careful that your rebuttal doesn't undermine your positive material. That would be the thing. So, <laughs> I know this is crazy, but do you remember the POI you're going to ask? Yeah, no, no, no. I, <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I remember. Sure. Um, I just think it's important because these are the sort of decision making things that have to go on, and, and, and it's important for OP to understand this is what Gov has to do because you can ream them on these things if they don't make the right decision. Right? So that's why, I'm, yeah. yeah. Okay. So your POI was, uh, it, it means that um, people are signing up anywhere, right? Uh, just like was that it? I think it was just like, oh, like you're saying, like it already happens. Either a the status quo solves, or b like mm -hmm. you, you like don't give a reason why it should be mandatory. Yeah, and the reason the status quo doesn't solve uh, this particular problem is that we don't have an ample pool of people. Not enough people are signing up. So what this would do is this would give us like a, a like a lot of people, um, and therefore would give us an, like ample samples to test. Um, now, moving on to my argument proper, which is I'm going to show you the cost to the prisoners and the benefit uh, of new drug creation. And now, here's the thing about the cost to the prisoners. First of all, what we have to realize is that they have committed a heinous enough crime against society to warrant both loss of right to life and the right to choice. Um, this way, not only do like will they be able to give back or make reparations to society, but because they are not being tortured because they still maintain and retain their human rights. Um, this, like, it, it is not as egregious an insult as, uh, sorry, as egregious a violation of uh, rights as a side opposition would have you believe. Um, like we already showed you, that the precedent is to stop when there is too much pain. We are not torturing them. Uh, no, thank you. Uh, now, moving on to um, the benefit of new drug creation. Like, like my partner told you, we help all of mankind. We have, th these trials um, will be extremely helpful um, for new drugs and vaccines that will help people from all walks of society and all sections of society and not even, not even just this country. So, um, I know it's easy to weep for the prisoners or to feel like their right of choice is being infringed. But here's the thing, for every mother, brother, teacher, anyone out there whose lives are better because of the new drug that you find or who enjoy a better quality of life because of the new drugs that have been found, um, the little, like the infringement on the right of choice, uh, right to choice of people who have already forfeited both right to choice and right to life is not that much. And um, therefore, what have I shown you today? I have shown you how their, the side opposition's arguments um, do not stand and why with our solution we will be able to benefit society a great deal without, as, without that much cost. To, uh, to the prisoners or to society, and therefore I urge you to go inside government. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I know the timing is really awkward with yeah. the starting and stopping, no, no, no. but yeah. All right. And so just to be clear, we're operating on the assumption that she went with the like large sample size thing. Like not torturing yeah. large sample size. Okay, yeah. Mr. Speaker, on side government, we agree to the fact that yes, it, or not, um, I mean, for their side, we agree to the fact that it will help to better the human society or it will help progress the scientific community. But Mr. Speaker, what they are not even considering is the fact that it, what it's the impact of such a resolution on this institution of a legal system. Because we on side opposition tell you consistently that it's not the fact that people should be subject to such torture, but it's the fact that a legal system, that a legal institution will be undermined if you use this, this system in, as a pipeline to ensure that they have certain test subjects uh, for the scientific community and we on side opposition believe, believe that that's extremely harmful. So before I move on to my uh, case uh, on my positive matter, I'd first like to get into a few points of rebuttal. The first point is 
But the fact that, uh, firstly, on site government, they do not sh uh, show a clear line as to where they're going uh, or how they're going to conduct that, uh, their. Uh, in a way, their experiments. They say that they, that the moment the victim starts feeling too much pain, they're going to, in a way, suddenly stop. But where is that fine line that they they are proposing to us? Where is that amount of pain? It's very subjective thing. That that side uh, pain is a very subjective thing. So therefore, you cannot exactly quantify on when someone would feel pain. Most importantly, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, for we we know that not all prisoners are comfortable on being experimented on. Some prisoners might even be afraid of uh, being test subjects. Or fact that they even might be afraid of certain experiments procedures are we going to infringe on their rights as well and that's firstly and if even if we do infringe on their rights is it the uh, role of the legal justice system to infringe on their rights as human beings we on side uh, uh, opposition believe that as a legal institution as an institution which provides justice for the people and uh, another institution should not infringe on the rights of the people in the first place front half now one thing we need to get started before we continue this debate pay sorry, person sorry. or not uh, finish, finish. I'm, I'm sorry. Pain thresholds are not subjective. A simple glance over NIH guidelines gives very detailed, specific pain thresholds for every species of every animal in every scenario. Okay, then time out before that. Uh, just in that situation, I would take closing okay. because it's going to give you a chance to hear what they have to say. Right. And it, this is your one opportunity to engage with right. them. Right. Okay. So maybe what they come up with, you're able to rebut. You've already heard their stuff. Yeah. Um, so, so this is your chance to hear their case, and maybe like you know, the last minute and a half or two minutes of your speech, you'd be like, "Oh, and I was already going to talk about even if you weren't, I was already going to talk about that and right. you engage with them." So, just strategically, but we'll go with we'll go with this one. Okay, sure. So, even if we say that we can monitor how much pain they feel, we do we do not we we think. That at the end of the day, even if you poke someone with a needle and inject some chemical in them, they're not going to feel pain suddenly. They might even die of that chemical reaction that occurs within the body due to that experimentation. So we never know on what exactly is going to happen to these prisoners. And as a result, we see that at the end of the day, we cannot infringe on their rights as people. But most importantly, Mr. Speaker, I'm going to talk to you about how it firstly eliminates the chances of the prisoners contemplating uh, on their decisions on what they have done. So what we see is that when people are sentenced to uh, death penalty, they essentially go going to die. So what the legal justice system, the justice system allows is the fact that it allows these people to contemplate on what they have done as a, and what they have done. Like for example, even if a person has raped or even if a person has murdered, it allows it allows them to contemplate on their decision. So what this does is that by subjecting them to experimentation, you're essentially eliminating their chances of them contemplating on their actions. What this does is that uh, this does is it undermines the role of the legal justice system in the first place because on side opposition we believe that the justice system is firstly uh, uh, implemented to ensure that the people are aware of what their actions are they, they're put in jail even if they're put in jail to understand that whatever they have done is wrong fine they're on death penalty fine that they're going to die but that does not mean that we take away their right to, in, to their right to ensure or their right to understand what their actions have done to them um, first of all, uh, okay, I, we'll give you that, why this happens, but why is it important? I was going to get to that. Okay. <laughs> Keep going. Right. So the moment you say that people do not, ha the, the moment you say that the people don't have the right to contemplation, uh, contemplation, essentially what you're doing is firstly you're undermining the role of the uh, legal justice system as well. People, like for example, the families of these people, uh, like families of the people who are convicted, think that their son or their daughter or whoever is in prison is going to have their last chance of living and last chance of contemplating on what this has done. So what this does is that it creates a negative outlook of the justice system on such people who have been. Uh, that the relatives of such people who have been convicted. What this does is that, uh, thirdly, this negative perception of the legal justice system is bad because first, because it does not allow people to have their due process and does not allow people to know what they have done. Um, can we think of a better impact for that? Yeah, yeah. Is it like the human animal to like the point where you strip people like the rights of life before they no, die? No, I'm not sure. I, yeah, I don't, like, I don't want to like, change your guys' arguments too much, but like going on that same argument, like at the point where you've decided what you did is wrong and really realized what you did is wrong, what can you do with that that's more impactful than like uh, the family members of a, of a convicted felon don't like the legal system? They probably didn't like it in the first place, but what, what, what could be done with that that's more impactful? Probably apologize to the victim that yeah, I, or, 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 like, such people can be used as, I don't know. 
tools for message message. Yeah, concepts. I mean, maybe you've got you've got people that end up writing books, or they do like uh, scared stiff. You know, they talk to they talk to kids that you know don't don't end up like me. Or yeah, I think the big one is just yeah. talking maybe to the victim or the victim's family. Yeah. You know, sometimes there's some closure there. You see, I think those are just yeah. much clearer impacts than than right. like the family doesn't like the legal system. Right. Okay. Let's let's let's. You have like 45 seconds. So let's let's kind of talk about that a little bit. Sure. Uh, okay, what this does is that firstly, the family members know that their that their kid is going to uh, going to die. Moreover, it it's like moreover the fact that if this kid is going through an unwanted treatment, it's not like all prisoners want to go through this treatment. What this does is that firstly, the family does not have the chance to talk with their kid as to uh, on their last few moments. What this we see is that we are not only infringing on the right of the convicted, but we are also infringing on the right of the people to communicate with, uh, of, of their kin to communicate with the convicted victim as well. And what this does is that it essentially uh, takes away the last few moments that the family has to talk with this kin. And this emotional aspect of it, we should not infringe on as we on opposition believe. That is not the duty of the government to ensure that this right of the people is taken away at all costs. And for these reasons, we say opposition wins. Yeah. Okay, stop. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> The opposition comes up here and tells you, look, the legal system is going to be undermined, the justice system is going to be undermined, but they never actually give you any kind of articulate reason as to how this is going to happen, why this is going to happen, and in the end, like, why this is going to be important. The biggest impact that the last speaker goes for are the last precious moments of a family member. While we tell you on side government that there is going to be medical advancements that's going to be made in society. Now we can clearly see that we will actually be impacting more people through the medical advancements that we can get rather than the few precious moments, which they still can get through, like even if they go through medical experimentation. Now let's look at their first line of analysis where they tell you it reduces the human being to a subhuman level and basically an animalistic level. We as a side government, we're going to state that their discourse of anthropocentrism where they say that, look, we're the human being and we're a superior level than you are because you're an animal and we're human, and their only line of analysis is, um, and um, humans have the reasoning capabilities while animals do not, is the exact mindset that causes the dehumanizations and the otherization to happen in the first place. Which means that if they still have this logical reasoning and a logical analysis as to how this is going to happen, they're never going to end up solving for the big impact of dehumanization that every debater out there claims to solve for. Which means that they really don't have much going for them when it comes to like, what happens in the end when you vote for the opposition team. Now let's look to, uh, also, you have to take into consideration that these prisoners are actually sentenced to death penalty before the medical experimentations happen. So therefore, the uh, individual rights are kind of happening on a different kind of a spectrum. You have to take into consideration that they've already lost their right to life, which means that like they don't really help the right cause here by like giving them, oh, like we give you an option to choose, which means that this actually functions on a different level. And so they're trying to claim this grandiose impact of like, look, we're going to give like autonomy and rights and like right to choose to everyone, where they're, they don't even have like the inherent right to life to begin with. Um, I'll take front half. Uh, no, no, no. Same, same reason. <laughs> same, same reason I told them you want to take I'll back take half. Back and and it, it, especially for you, because it gives your partner a chance to start thinking about what they're saying right, too. I'll take Sorry. Back. Sorry, bro. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, given that so many benefits can be accessed through this medical research, wouldn't this incentivize the justice system to place more convicts on death row for their offenses? No, it wouldn't, because you're un you're under the logical assumption that like the justice system is flawed to begin with, which means that that is kind of like a different debate to have as a whole. We're only talking about like whether these people that are already sentenced to death penalty should be used for medical experimentation or not. So Mr. Speaker, as a backup of the half of the government team, we want to actually not focus on the individual itself, but we want to focus on the obligations of the government and how the power relation between the government and the individuals that exist in society work out. We want to say that the power analysis is actually going to be the op uh, the prerequisite to looking for what the what obligations of the government 
are. And so we're going to state that in the status quo, the government actually uses their political power in this form of punishment in which they, um, in which we kind of use the justice system in which it's like an eye for an eye. So by basically by using this kind of a system, it kind of gives the government a power where it's like, we can do this to you because we're the government. And that's like where their like logic and reasoning of power comes in. This is like, basically described as like the right to kill and it gives a p uh, power to the government showing like look what look well, what we can do to people back. And, and you're saying this is a good thing right no we're saying that it's a bad thing so giving the people giving your, your side is giving the government more power right no we're going to say that the power that we're giving to the government should be different in that it shouldn't be like a we're giving the government like a right to punish but we have like um, separate ways of like approaching the role of the government in which we have like a mindset change in that like you help out society more. Wait, can I by, by punishing no, these like, people. So okay, so right now, people. these people are sentenced to death penalty and they all right. are just going to die, right? right? But after, like, allowing for medical experimentation to happen, then we allow for another, like, role of the government and, like, we allow for, like, a shift of the perspective of the government to help out society and other people, and, like, society views government as, like, helping them and okay. not, like, the punishment. I think you need to cut out, like, all the jargon, like, shift in perspective and blah, 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 okay. and literally just say, like, right now we're killing them and getting nothing from it. Uh-huh. Okay, under our policy, okay. we're going to kill them uh -huh. and have a benefit to society from it. Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. Okay, so you see, just cut out all the language because I, I couldn't figure out like the I couldn't figure out where you're going with that until. Okay. Yeah. Uh, w were you going to were you going to say something too? Or? Oh no, I was just I, it was going to be like a, a slightly lesser explanation, like more condensed version of the argument. Yeah. Just that right now the government uses the death penalty and it's like, look what we can do, we can kill you, look at how much power we have, like a Machiavelli kind of view, we want to just be feared. But we want instead for it to show that yes, we are going to kill you because you've done something bad and you violated our laws, but also we're going to do something that tries to help benefit society. So it's more of a view that the government is not just there to be feared, but rather to be feared, but also to help you. Okay, yeah, so something like that just got le less of like, you know, like the debate jargon and the lingo involved, because I was getting lost in all that. Okay. Um, okay. Do I? Yeah, you have explain a, it or? Yeah, let's start that point. We have a minute and forty-five seconds of the speech left, and then go ahead and restart that point. Okay. Wait one sec. Okay. So in the status quo, the government basically uses their power to um, enforce a Machiavellian government, in which they just have this mentality in which it's like, look what we can do to you. And instead, after the medical experimentation can happen, they look at the government not as like an entity to be feared, but also as like a mixture of like, yes, like they can punish you for the wrong things that they did, but they also do something to benefit the society as a whole. And this switch in perspective from the government being an entity to be feared into a government that is helping out the people will really help out society as a whole. Because we can see that the better relations that happen within the people and the government in itself can just help out society in general. And this allows for more of a better society to happen. And so we're allowed to trans... Uh -huh. There's a lot of really general terms. Remember we said about the general terms? Uh -huh. I don't know what better society or better relationships or any of that stuff means. So you, you have a minute left. Maybe be more specific about those things. All right. So the better relation, the better society comes from the perspective of the government. When you only view the government as an entity to be feared, then you have this like closing block in between the government and the society as a whole. But if we allow for this inclusive um, form of a way to view the actor, to not be someone that's only feared, but someone that actually wants to help you out, this allows for a more inclusive society, and that's why it's... I, it's not that I don't understand no. the principle of it, it's I don't see any example. I can't I can't envision an example. Like, are, are people going to comply with cops more readily? Um, are, are police officers going to get, you know, better testimony, or witnesses are going to come forward and talk to cops in areas where they wouldn't have talked to cops otherwise? Are more people going to support the death penalty? Yeah, like, what's a, you're still being super general, you know what I mean? Okay. You're just like, you're re-explaining the theory no, behind it, it, you're not telling me anything. Mm -hmm. 
And this is something you remember for all you guys when we talk about context and we talk about, you know, like the people and the pr principle and you're coming up with the arguments, this is where it replaced the general terms with specifics. Like, know what we're talking about so that way when you imply something like mm -hmm. this is going to change a relationship between prisons and mm -hmm. government and people, mm -hmm. that's not just like a debate argument, but it actually means something in the, in the real world. You know? Can you think okay. of it? I mean, do you have any examples for that? I actually don't. Okay, so you see why that's a problem, right? Yeah. Okay, because you guys are like, we're going to have a better society, and they're going to come up here and they're like, we're going to have a worse society, and I'm going to be like, I, okay, I'm not really sure how to decide between those two things. Okay. Right? So, finish the speech off, but then maybe your partner can be thinking of things, or you guys can think of things, and then she can pretend like you said them, which, happen, which happens in debate a lot. Okay? But, but just for future reference or for the other teams. But it's almost as if it did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, does that make sense, though? Yeah, it does okay, make sense. Okay, so like 30 seconds left. All right, so it allows us to be reminded that like the government is actually out to protect us, not just to punish us, which means that the people are more willing to comply with different kinds of legislatures and, legislatures and be able to comply more with the government. This also allows for different kinds of more involvement within the political system in itself. This allows for a betterment of society because they get involved, they get integrated into society, and that's what the perfect society would be. And so that's why we probably could... Oh, oh. Yeah. Well, we should have a medical experimentation. <laughs> 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 Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for having Good luck, everybody. that the entire debate has focused a lot on the idea of pain. Um, we want to talk about more why the government should be doing this as just in general. We take issue with the idea that the government should be having this coalition between science and justice. We kind of hear that a little bit in the top half, but I want to go into uh, a little bit more of like the idea of the role of government in this entire issue, um, and specifically looking at precedents where we actually adopt the calculus that government is trying to um, extend here today. Um, I want to go into a little bit of rebuttal before I get into my main points. Firstly, we hear out of this last speaker the idea that if we value human like if we humanize people and continue to do that we're actually going to lead to dehumanization by valuing human life I don't see any link there we think on the side of the house that if we value human life if we don't uh, allow them to be uh, forced into a medical experimentation phase we're actually going to be seeing more value put on human life and less dehumanization so we think that that's on our side of the house we don't see any link on their side um, we also agree yeah okay they've lost their right to life sure but they, that doesn't mean they have lost their life their right to everything else that happens to them before they're killed we don't think that that's a part of what being uh, assigned to death penalty actually means so we don't see any reasoning on their side of the house for why they actually lose what they can do during their life still we just yeah okay they've lost their right to life but we don't think did, that that did they say anything besides right to life right to choose yeah, so are you going yeah. to cover that too? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Can I go? Okay. Um, what they're when they're talking about, the, okay, I'll, I'll be answering right to, right to choose though in my uh, positive matter. Um, okay, so we, yeah, I would just, I would just include at that point because you, you really? it seems like okay. super simple because you're saying like they talk about right to life, but they definitely, and so because yeah, yeah. right to life, nothing before that, okay. but when they say right to choose, there's clearly things before that. So okay. if, if it's going to be positive sure. material, but you just don't want me thinking that that I've ignored missed it. it. Yeah, okay, exactly. all right. Yeah. So, and then getting on to their point about right to choose. We don't think that there's actually any reasoning on, really actually any good reasoning to contend with on their side of the house for why they've lost the right to choose. I mean, clearly as we've already seen, we treat these people as people up until the point that we execute them. We don't see that there's any reasoning to take away their right to choice. Um, specifically, I'll be addressing this one in my point on talking about double punishment. All right, uh, lastly, really quick, uh, their idea of power analysis and how when the government uses this political power to ensure eye for eye treatment. Um, first of all, we take issue with the idea that that is the way to successfully uh, address justice in society, this idea of eye for eye. We also don't think that by um, encouraging the government to uh, can, can allow I people. Can I stop to... you there for a second? Yeah. So, so you thought that that point was that they, they, they want the government to operate in an eye for eye manner? It sounded like it to me. Okay. You see, so that's what I was getting at. When you were talking about it, it sounded like you were proposing the government should be punishing. 
when, when you know after I stopped you, you said okay actually we're saying that that's bad uh-huh. and this is a better system but you see like so clearly some it wasn't just me that just yeah. makes me feel better so, so, <laughs> so that it just gives you an idea how that was coming off so yeah. just be careful about how you're kind of the language you're using to present that so yeah you, you're fine I just was yeah. all right and then uh, so lastly we, we don't we don't we take issue with that but also we don't like or we don't understand the idea of why the government is now going to be less feared and more appreciated by society we don't think there's any strong links there uh, we also think that it's actually going to be very harmful people are going to look at society like government as like this really kind of maniacal like institution that's enforcing people to go into medical experimentation. So uh, on to positive matter, uh, I do want to also address the idea of this problem. We don't think that there's actually a very clear problem identified by the side gov- by side government. We already see the status quo. People are volunteering. People are paid to do this. But also we also think that there are alternatives in the status quo, but also in the future in terms of medical technology basically negating the need for a human life. And you can actually just test this on like individual organs and stuff in the scientific community. Um, mm. Lastly. Uh, before I go into my positive material, uh, we also want to re-say how we, we value human dignity and justice on our side of the house, uh, not just progress. On our side of the house, we do value progress. We think scientific progress is great, but we're also going to be valuing human dignity and justice because we think that without those, you actually lead to le- a, a worse society on their side of the house. So first, the idea of justice. When we're talking about the role of the government, what is the role of the government in terms of specifically dealing with the justice system. It's to assign punishment for crimes. What we think on the, what, what happens on the side of government though is you're punishing them not only for the crime, but you're, all, you're not only for that one crime, but then you're also subjecting them to something additional. We take issue with that, but before I go into why, I'll take your point. Yeah, first of all, we'd like to first of all point out the ludicrousness of the fact that we're saying that in a few years we're going to be able to create organs and test these uh, okay. human trials. But now we're saying we're getting some sort of double jeopardy by giving them twice once we're giving them medical trials. What you see is that we're not giving them a torturous trial. This is not Auschwitz doing criminal trials. What we're doing is, is approved okay. trials. All right, yeah, approved trials under your side of the house, we take issue with the idea that they would be approved. That is why we're debating this today. Uh, all right, going into uh, also double jeopardy, I'll be getting to that. Uh, so first, we, we want to also focus on the idea that uh, in this side, so side government, we're going to talk there's about... There's a better answer. So we, we kind of, I know it's confusing because we did a lot of start and stopping, but we yeah. kind of like accepted the fact that the trials are like hippie trials that aren't going to actually hurt anybody. So, so what's, what's a better answer to that? Regardless of whether they're approved, even even if it was like we're, you're going to wear a right. bandaid, you're going to be a bandaid tester. <laughs> like, why is it still wrong? We I'm right, we're we're saying that we shouldn't be forcing people to do something because they're already punished it's, for death row. Right, it's the choice argument. So I think just, it's just a better your your response to the okay, is a little, a little bit flippant. Right, yeah, okay, so like right. regardless of how soft the the experiment is, they're not choosing. Yeah. They're being forced into it. That's the problem we have. Yeah. Um, okay, so but this idea that what we're doing for people that are on death row, we think that when people are on death row, they're on. This is like kind of a long-term situation. One of the reasons for this is because they're able to go through an appeals process to prove that they're actually potentially not guilty. We think that some of the harms that you see on side government is that a lot of innocent people would be tested on medically, forced to be um, experimented on. We think that that's a harm because not only would they be killed unjustly under the death penalty, they would be killed unjustly and before that be subjected to medical testing. We think that that's really bad because uh, it's unfair. We think that in the justice system, the government should be encouraging fair retribution of punishment. We don't think that that's fair. But uh, secondly, the idea of double punishment, which I kind of address in my uh, in the POI, is the idea that we should not be p- forcing people who are already being punished for their crime to then be additionally punished for something. We, do, we don't think there's like really any uh, precedent for, well, we won't see anything, any good precedent coming out of this. We have a lot of bad precedents coming out of what the uh, rhetoric of side government. We have mandatory medical, um, sorry, sterilization of prisoners in California. We have the uh, uh, lobotomies in the United States for people that were quote unquote like medically unstable. Um, and then if you look at the, yeah, sure, Nazis, you're right. Yeah, we saw a lot of scientific advancement from the uh, medical experimentations that occurred in the concentration camps. We, the, uh, Germany, like, got a lot of benefits from that. We don't think that that's okay because it came at the cost of millions of lives. Um, so, and even if you buy all of their rhetoric and don't buy ours idea that you have to balance justice and progress, we do think that it's going to incentivize people to adopt this calculus which will allow prosecutors to put more people on death row, thus perpetuating a worse society. For those reasons, we are proud to oppose. Thank you. focused on something within the front half of the debate, that being that we are focusing upon the individual itself, help or harm. 
we brought to you the idea as closing government that we should be focusing on something entirely different, which closing opposition also agreed, that being the obligation of the government. So within this speech, I intend to prove to you that we ought to focus on the government's obligation first, and then second, whether or not it helps or harms those individuals, especially on a massive scale. But before I go into those two main areas of analysis, I'm going to first do a little bit of rebuttal. So we take a look at their new matter. They say, first, we're assigning punishment twice. They're going through double jeopardy. Well, if anything, first, this is only going to better increase the contemplation of the harms that they put on society, something that opening opposition so, har so harshly claimed that they wanted. They say we need to contemplate about the harms. Well, guess what? We're going to get more of that. Second, it means that they're going to feel as if they're doing something good. They have a chance to better society in a way that maybe in the past they realize they've done something bad. Oh, just a minute. You're good. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> sorry about that. All right. So furthermore, they say that they're on death row. They can go through an appeals process. Well, this is absolutely ridiculous. This is not a part of the debate. It says sentence within the motion. So they're sentenced to the death penalty. So this is a, not a question that we ought to be focusing on. Lastly, they say that the medical practices are bad because they come at the okay. price of life. Sentenced, sentenced happens and then they still appeal it. But um, oh, so I would just, okay. I would just say like it's pretty clear. I thought from opening okay. government and then just put it on them that like this would be after appeals processes are over. And okay. just like make it their bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Oh. You don't want to get, you don't want to get caught up in the debate where they're like, no, it's not after sentence. Then you got to respond and then it oh, okay. becomes your debate. You know. Sorry. Yeah, that's my bad. All right. That's cool. Right. No, it's their bad. Uh, it's opening government's problem for not really adequate. Okay. I, 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 I would I would literally say like if, if you're gonna do it verbatim, I would say uh, I thought it was pretty clear from opening government that okay. this is what I would be after the appeals process. All right, gotcha. gotcha. Even if they said nothing like that, which you did. Um, okay. And it, maybe it would have been. I mean, I would assume that that's the case, you know. But again, under con contextualization, it might have been something good to include. But whatever. Okay. I was okay. Make it a big deal until they gotcha. did. Yeah. Yeah. They sucked. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. It was pretty clear from the opening government and the front half of the debate in, in total that it is after the appeals process. So that should be a major point of contention in the debate. So lastly, they say that it's medical practices. At the price of lives. But what we see is that it's the price of lives really when we use those alternative measures that they brought up. That is truly saying we are only doing this upon people who are completely innocent, people who want to volunteer. This is an instance where it's individuals who have already harmed society in a very bad way. They've already lost their life through the death penalty. So may as well help society a little bit more. So let's take a look at the two main areas of the debate. First, what we are saying is the most important being the different approach, approach to a government obligation. How do citizens view the government? Government and how does the government interact with their citizens? This is a primary. Uh, this is a primary question to the obligation of the government in terms of whether or not we're causing harm to the prisoners or whether or not we're helping the majority. Here's why: the government, like we were saying previously, which was not very adequately responded to, is having a new approach. Rather than saying now we are going to say only we want to be feared, so we will use the death penalty, kill you, and you're done and gone. We don't care. Rather, we're taking a new approach. Then instead, we should be feared. So I got the theory behind it. Did you manage to think of any examples? Oh yeah. So I think okay. that. So just because just because we got that out of her a ton. Oh, okay. You don't want to spend any really any real time in your speech re-explaining the theory that yeah. we already got. So let's get to the. Okay. Stuff okay. okay. To, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So I don't even need to bring that up at all. Again. No, you're bringing it up, and you're saying hey, my partner told you how instead of the government being feared, we need the people to be able to appreciate the government. Boom. Okay. That's it. Now add what you needed to add. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm gonna start over with that quick explanation sure. then. Yeah. So, like my pre the previous speaker said, uh, or rather, how do I refer to her again? My partner? Just Andy. my partner? Andy. Okay, okay. Andy. <laughs> As Andy brought to you so eloquently, we see now that we're having a new approach to the government to for a citizens to appreciate the government more through having beneficial actions. What we see is that this leads to impacts on their daily lives, where citizens now le uh, will learn that they want to interact with the government possibly more. Rather than viewing the government as what they say as this maniacal force that simply views the individuals as their tools, as their own political power, now the individuals can see that they can interact with the government maybe through voting, maybe through uh, like trying to uh, interact in political spheres, trying to bring up their voices in areas, those sorts of things are now an easier thing to approach as beha on the behalf of the citizen rather than simply viewing the government as an evil power that simply wants to harm them or kill them whenever they want.
Back half. Okay, so aren't people only going to think that the government is now just more unjustly treating its civilians? And also, could you provide us an actual link between the b benefit that you're seeing? And the They're not going to view themselves as unjustly treating them because that's assuming that your arguments are correct. We see that it's wrong. <laughs> have a chance to give back to society. So if anything, they're going to be helping the individuals more. Then, in terms of your second question, I just explained it to you. The individuals feel better with interacting with the government because they don't see them as an evil parent looking over them and just trying to punish them whenever they possibly can, but rather someone or an entity that wants to benefit them. So, <coughs> second, let's take, uh, remember, first of all, that this is the major question of the debate. This is a prior question to obligations of what the government ought to do in terms of whether or not they are harming the prisoner or whether or not they're helping society because how we view the government and how what? Okay, okay. So how we view the government and how the government interacts with their citizens will dictate the obligations that they have in terms of whether or not they should benefit their citizens or whether or not they should harm their citizens. So this is something that uniquely has come from back half of the debate, specifically from closing government. So second, help or harm. Do we increase cures? Yes, there wasn't really a question to this. But what we see is that, as closing opposition said, they say that there are other ways that we can do this as well. So we see there's a unique obligation that is, there's a unique change within how the government individual interacts when we see those cures being try, uh, tried for on behalf of the government, so instead of on behalf of small private institutions, we see the government advocating for those cures. That's the difference that we see here. We see a benefit, but we also see the benefit in terms of how the government views our citizens. Do we harm individuals? Sure, maybe to some degree, but we see that first, it, outweighs the, it would outweigh the benefits because the benefits that come from these cures can help a large majority of people. And second, they already gave up their, li their right to choose when they gave up their right to life when they committed the harm and were sentenced to the death penalty. So there's a different approach to how the government interacts. The transfer of power from government, from being a feared actor and a bloodthirsty actor, to one that benefits society. That's what we advocate for, and that's what you get with the closing government. Thank you. Thank you for getting me. So ladies and gentlemen, the entire case has either been about many contradictions or many assumptions, both of which I'll attack. But let's start by the, their premise in itself. They claim that the most important question, or this paramount question is, who is, uh, which of these policies would grant most benefits to humanity? That is a utilitarian calculus of judgment, and that is something that we're entirely opposed to on side opposition. Just to even think that that question would determine the outcome of this debate is, uh, is slightly facile on their behalf. So, uh, so to, uh, this very idea, ladies and gentlemen, that simply scientific advancement is uh, paramount because it affects more people, more lives, and therefore is uh, the greatest good is something that we are opposed to. And, we, uh, and my partner already has introduced precedents where this form of judgment or this form of thinking persisted in society and how that has led to uh, bad, uh, bad examples such as Nazi Germany where scientific advancement was uh, paramount and this was used... Don't, don't use the Nazis. I mean, that's like always like, oh, Hitler did it. Like there, <laughs> she, she had two other ones I thought that were really good. That we won. Yeah, but just even skip the Nazis. It just seems like... Uh, I'm only using that because they were achieved six, almost a few decades of progress in seven years no, because they... No, not with medical progress. They didn't do much. Yeah, but I just... I just okay, no, regardless no. of any of that, it just rhetorically, it always just seems it's like, a cliche oh my God, now. God, it's a cliche. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So okay. That, that's the only reason. And the other two, the other two are like totally salient yeah. to the debate we're talking about, and just way more reasonable. Yeah. So and both. And uh, apart from that, uh, she also introduced this idea of how sterilization has occurred in, within California uh, among uh, inmates and among uh, unstable patients, and lobotomies have occurred, and all of these uh, are with this basic idea that scientific advancement is better than. Uh, the infringement of rights of a few people or of uh, a larger group of people. So that is something we are opposed to. Then, uh, th this idea of contradictions, ladies and gentlemen, they claim that this will solve for a problem. 
and yet they already produced a solution for the problem, which is outsourcing uh, medical experimentation, right? Uh, they claim that uh, they have a smaller pool of volunteers right now and you need more people. Well, you can do that by outsourcing and by conducting the same experiment in Shanghai or, or uh, some other country where, in essence, even if you think that there is a, a, a homogeneous genetic pool in Shanghai or in other countries and you need something more diverse, that is not necessarily granted by accessing uh, people that were placed on death penalty. One, one, the number of people placed on death penalty even in the US is one too low for you to say that you'll have a larger pool of applicants to test on. And two, neither is it too diverse. You usually... So are you making this point because it's like an easy point to talk about or because you think it's like a, a big voting issue at the end of the debate to help win you guys the round? Uh, the most important voting issue will be my last thing to say and I'll stop. I mean, okay. I just, I just, I think that like they, they came up with some good stuff at an opening that still hasn't, you know, been addressed. I think like just in general, like the balance between, um, you know, the government trying to maximize welfare yeah. and the progression of science. I think that you should be spending your time there instead of spending like forty seconds on the, you know, like uh, it's not enough people or uh, the biology. You see, I just think it's inefficient. You're a whip speaker, so you have five minutes in this particular thing to summarize forty. You got to be really careful about what you choose. I don't think that that's like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna vote on that at the end of the round. I can tell you right now. Okay. Like, so or, or so I would I would choose the big points, not the one that's like you're right about all of it. Um, and and even if you might like help, okay, yeah. whatever. Um, uh, even if you might kind of get them out of the debate, you're not necessarily doing much to make sure that you guys won the debate. Yeah. You know, it just seems okay. like it's just like a convenient point for you. Yeah, exactly. So I would I would skip it. Uh, okay. You're at two ten. So wait. Um, just, just mm -hmm. Uh, so, do you think I should more effectively address their points, or should I summarize our case more? I think I mean, at, this point, at this point, I think you guys are probably the clearest team in the debate. Yeah. You know, so if you can see that, I definitely would, I would, I would reinforce your positive material okay. a lot yeah, more. Yeah, I, 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 and then when you do rebut the two teams, I would, I would be rebutting the main thesis of each of the teams, okay. not the nitpicky stuff from the two teams. Okay, so, okay. Uh, so, let, let me see. Yeah, so given that that is the case, let us move on to uh, closing half of side government. And their most important point is about how you're changing this perspective of a government being viewed as uh, an actor of fear or someone who imposes fear to uh, enable uh, progress in society. One, that is a false presumption. Uh, people in the US or people across the world in liberal democracies don't view their government as actors of fear or someone who imposes fear to en enact uh, law and order. Uh, uh, two, ladies and gentlemen, this doesn't change anything. Even if, even if there are uh, these uh, epitomies of fear, by uh, ascribing uh, inmates to medical uh, experimentation, you're only making this worse, wherein people now view them as not only uh, fearful, but also inhumane in nature. So given that that exists, let's move on to what uh, side opposition brought to you today. So one, we talk about th this idea of how you must, when you're considering uh, infringement of rights, a deontological perspective of the entire debate. And uh, wherein... Uh, you, you not only refer to the, these rights, and this, this has also become a very important question. Which rights are you infringing upon and have they already been forfeited? No, th these inmates have only forfeited their right to life. They have not forfeited their right to choose, especially within those con uh, the conditions that they are subject to. Now that, the old, now, that you're old, now that you're also infringing or ensuring that they forfeit this right, this is something that uh, my partner brought to you as in her uh, arguments as a double jeopardy, where the, wherein there, uh, two of their rights or two of their most fundamental rights are being infringed upon for one act of crime, one act of heinous crime. And that is something that is entirely opposed to this idea of a justice system uh, that is very strongly instituted in the United States. But yes. now, Can you please tell me how they have not lost the right to choose? They do not choose when they can eat. They do not choose when they can go outside. They do not choose where they can live. They have fundamentally lost their right to choice already. Now we are at least letting them give back society and have su substantial benefit 15. to the world as a whole. You're not letting them give back to society, you're forcing them to give back to society. <laughs> that is a, a loss of right to choose, ladies and gentlemen. Can I, that, but, that's fine. Um, and, and the reason he can do that, he just completely ignored the good part of your POI. So every one of your POIs has been like eight parts so far. Um, pick, pick the good part and stick to it. Pick the one, because that, that right, the choice argument is boom. Right. But then because you felt like, I have to throw in this little like blurb at the end, right. he's, he just completely ignored the choice point. And okay. it's not going to be anywhere near as obvious to the judges because he's answering what you said. Sure, sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, keep keep them keep them short. One one point. 
Should I also address his choice thing? Because I have something, yeah, but I... You I should, should, but I mean, like, yeah. But he's like, <laughs> I yeah, also want to move on to... Yeah, because you only have... Because he took him at the four minute, that's a, so yeah, it's convenient okay, for you. Yeah, so I'm, so I'm not... What you did wasn't bad, considering his POI. Yeah. But, okay. um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so... Uh, not only we have, uh, have you addressed that, but we also address this idea of death penalty or death row in itself. There are two purposes to death row within our current justice system. One that was brought by opening opposition, which is this idea of contemplation and how you, uh, remo you engage in remorse and all of this activity. But two, you have the appellate process, ladies and gentlemen, where you appeal for uh, uh, re-examination of evidence and re-examination of all the judgments that were passed by, this court, uh, by a lower court. And given that that has not been clear in any case, and given that uh, duration for death row is much longer than it is usually perceived, this app, this uh, oh. Oh, this appeals process <laughs> is a never-ending process. If a victim, or if, if a convict feels that the judgment meted out to him is unjust, then he has the right to repeatedly appeal for a better judgment. And given that that is a right we grant uh, inmates, we grant people on death penalty, and you're infringing upon that right through medical experimentation, we believe that side opposition wins this debate. Okay, so, so you see the time issue, you see why I'm yeah, talking about you not, not dealing with the Shanghai stuff yeah. in the beginning, that wasn't going to win, and then you, you end up cutting out a really good good argument, which is your pellet, like, you know, I, I'm not going to get, if it's past the 515, I, I can't give you credit for it. So, that's why I'm picking in the beginning. You got to have the foresight in the beginning of your speech to understand how much room you're going to have at the end of the speech, yeah? So, okay. Um, you guys want to shake hands, all that stuff? You want to shake hands? Gross. Oh, really? uh. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to, okay. You practice. Cross the house. Yeah. Yeah. What if I just, like, gave you guys the fish hand, you know? Oh. <laughs> like, going, I have a random question. She has a random question. Um, okay, so I don't know how accepted this is, but would it be okay no. if we made like a bigger deal of the discourse that they use in the first speech? Because like literally the entire thing is a little too far. You can, but then you're still. Do you think? I don't think judges would really. Yeah, I already have. Yeah, probably. It's a little bit off from the rest of the day. Oh, you're back. Sorry for the way. Sorry. You can come back. I felt. I felt as if that was the case. It's just like I didn't know if it was kind of discourse. Critical arguments were really accepted. It's fine. I mean, but it's like not like. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could make it an argument, but you have to do a lot more with it. Because you got to realize the judge is going to be like, okay, that's a little weird. I think you could make it, but um, not worth time. Yeah, no. So, um, okay, so, so, I, I, so, so I put one more rebuttal that you don't ask me a question about because it doesn't work by that Okay, so, yeah, uh, sorry, not a rebuttal. So usually, usually I do whip, right? Okay, so when I do whip, do you think it's more, so generally like what I do is I'll have like three, like three or four main, I just do the main vote, right? So, do you think I should specifically rebut argumentation, put a section of rebuttal, or do you think it's just inherently like refute the major, the major idea? Through like my major, because like, I usually do like this, like like if this one would be like human rights, like right to choice, like that, like, like, and I repeat the main ideas, but not necessarily. Yeah, time is up. Sometimes I'll have uh, set reputation because the closing off speech just came out like a whole case. Right. Okay. So I might have a rebuttal and then then summarize. Um, if the case fits into what was happening in the rest of the round, I might just summarize. Um, off what you can generally just always summarize okay, because so you've had a lot of time to think about how the closing does. Because the member speaks because, like three speeches. Yeah. Sometimes my different things to different judges, but I just want to make sure. So it's okay for me not to refute as long as I'm getting at the main ideas and the... Yeah, and you might just want to point it out. For gov whipping, yeah. You might just want to point it out, like, hey, right. um, this is their extension. Right. It deals right. with this theme of the round, and this is what... So I don't need to set up like a minute or a half for like rebuttal. Separate rebuttal now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In a... In a seven minute web speech, would it have been uh, valid to even refer to a Shanghai? A little bit, but also in a seven minute speech, she would have brought up more positive material, so that would be, again, that would have been your priority. She would have explained the book. Yeah, I would have liked to hear more on the choice, like when they're selling you, like they give up the freedom of choice. I think if you're going to rebut something from them, that would be because that's the same thing I told her. It's almost like, you know, you guys are saying giving up life and that's it, but they're telling you, like, yeah, you're giving up choice. Also, so I think that would have been, if you rebut that, your positive material first. 
$600. We're about to have a big argument well, second, like, and, and, and then, and then you know, like, you know, you know, you know, like, you know, you know, but the problem is when you're, yeah, when you're rebutting in the beginning of the speech, you can't waste time, you usually don't realize until the end of the speech. So I, 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 so, uh, yeah, that was, uh, so the that I yeah, that I thought was really good. Yeah. 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 So that was good for both of you guys. Like, you know, they just assumed the progress on their side. So when we start weighing the two sides out, they they, they try to make it, like, so point of controversy, they try to make it like, justice versus progress. So when you can call into question uh, progress versus justice, when you can call into question the progress of justice at all, or progress at all, so you're getting to, like, disagree with the most essential question of the debate. So, you have to say, yeah, I thought that was better. And spending more time on that. Oh, you can also just write it. That's basically like the Nazi thing. Do you see what I'm saying? It's just, it's just a lot of judgment. It's just like, uh, you're right. But, a lot, but if you say, like, literally in California, the, like, the place we are now, like, a year ago, they were, you know, oh, know. Really sterilizing people, like, real people, you know, versus, like, fucking, we all know about the Nazis, yeah. right? They were, like, zombie Nazis. Yeah. So, you know, it just, it just has that connotation with it. Not that it's not correct or anything, it's just, it just, it just, it just, it's just, it's like, okay, Nazis, you're right. And you're right, it is like Nazis, but they're going to be like, you know, versus other ones, like, oh, shit. Oh, this, this is on just the impact point. Oh. I just put a whole problem with us when you put a problem between their countries and their ideal countries and their Nazi countries. It's a whole entire country of this game. It's a cliche. Okay, yeah, I just think it's way more effective because you have those other examples. If you didn't have any other example, sure, yeah, but because you have those examples. Or even say the stuff the Nazis did without saying Nazis are there. Just don't say Nazis are there. Yeah. So they, when, when, we, when, we, when we strive for medical progress at the expense of anything, you know, even when we get it, it's not, it's not it's really good. Good. And there are times in our history where that's happened. And then the judge is like, yeah, that's not see it. Then, then they're feeling it in and it's so way we should, better. We should, we should make the judge fill that in. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's, that's the one thing that you should, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the one thing you should leave up to the judge, yeah. just to make the connection to us. Yeah. There's times in our history. Nazis, just like the Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like the Nazis, they're like, oh god. Well, I, always I, I, I actually, it was yeah. also what I was thinking yeah. out in the hall, I was like, oh, I forgot, like, I can bring the Nazis up, but I, like, don't really want to. But then he brought it up in the POIs, I was like, yeah, you're right. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Next. Um, also, with uh, the, I mean, you said the uh, opening gap for the said. Uh, this is after the appeal process has ended. Yeah. Does the appeal process have ended? Yeah. More allowed. Yeah, they run out of time. I ended it with like 250 files or whatever. There's a lot of time. That was probably the solution. I think if I had the actual. Yeah. Because like, they don't have to do it. Yeah. 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 I think the biggest thing that you guys did, you guys didn't do that, the contextualization. You know, so when you're running all those debate arguments, because they sound like they yeah, were biased. The like you got this There's motion of no justice order. and you know the yeah, government and the justice system, 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 system so you immediately want to access arguments about like, oh, wouldn't it be nice if the community and the government would get along? So let's build arguments on that. Instead of and, and then since you can't have any examples, you know what I mean? It's kind of risky. So if you go the other way around um, and you contextualize first, so okay, what exactly are we talking about? What's it going to look like? You know, I don't think you would have came to those arguments. I think you could have gotten arguments that were based on that. Um, I, yeah. If you were going to try and do that, I was trying to think of how to defend it. So if you want to run that argument, I guess one way you could argue for like you're, you're suggesting that the population is going to think that the government's more benevolent after this policy, right? Um, so one way, again, if we're going to do that argument, I think that you could, anytime there's votes on um, uh, how to treat criminals, the population always votes in favor of the people that are tougher on crime. Oh, tougher on crime, tougher on crime. Okay, so what that shows is that the population sees themselves as separate from these criminals. So they don't really care. Like, you're, you're doing experimentation on the criminals, but the government is, or the population, the general population, is always so quick to say, fuck them, they broke the social contract, it's a rapist, it's a murderer, it's this person. Experiment on them, that's fine, because we us people, we get the benefit. And like, all, all politicians are always tough. And it's the reason that conditions in jails and stuff are so shitty because people are always okay with being harder on criminals. You know, it, it means we're going to, we can fund our schools. I think it's a good example. Like, oh, we're going to take money away from prisons to give it to schools. They don't need beds. They don't need, you know, anything in, in prison. But our, our, our kids need books. 
always okay with that. You know, um, sex offense registries, they don't need the right to privacy, they don't need this or that. We need to protect our community. So I think, again, if you want to run that argument, I think that's something you could use to kind of help defend it. Uh, which, which would then be, okay, now the population sees that the government's on their side, and then maybe you could, um, I still wouldn't run that if you did that. I think that would be, be something reasonable to believe. Yeah, because it, it's definitely one step further than, like, we're not going to give them nice veg. Like, to actually force them into experimentation seems like that might cross the threshold where the populace starts to think, like, okay, maybe we need to care about criminals a little bit. So that'd be the, it just seems, it just seems counterintuitive. You're asking the judge, you're asking the judge to ask themselves, um, but an average voter, when they hear the news, that our government's going to be forcing medical experimentation on prisoners, would the average voter say, oh my god, that's fucked up, or would they say, oh sweet, there might be a cure for my disease? And I think, you know, me, I think that they'd probably go with the first one. Maybe different judges differently, but I think that that would be the initial reaction. That's what closing off the city is like, no, it wouldn't be seen as benevolent, you'd be seen as more malicious, even scarier. So yeah, that that's the thing that that decision you're asking the judge to make that decision, and I think they probably fall on the side that you don't. I think there's one other thing with food. I always had on closing side. You have to follow the philosophy that the big thing has constructed. I feel like you should like it. Yeah, you can. Yeah, as long as it's not mutually exclusive, yeah, we'll talk about it. So you don't have to talk about it at all, though. They had a philosophy for this reason, we have a philosophy for this reason, uh -huh. totally different, as long as they don't contradict. But when voting deviates a lot, how do you judge? Like, how would you say which one's more substantial or which one's Yeah, and that, that comes down to, like, how are they able to back it up? Now. So, like, if they, if they let's say it was them versus closing off on the same side, then this is going to make sense. But, and they come up with, here's our case, here's our philosophy, but we don't have any real-world examples, and I'm left like, okay, I understand what you're trying to say, but I don't buy the premise of it, and I also don't see any like, impact of it or any practical. And then closing is like, okay, well, deep sterilization. That one thing is like, okay, I get it. That that seems real to me. So those would be the two ways to compare the two philosophies. I don't think it's real friends. As long as I'm not going to like totally over pretend to be. So it's it's different from the opening team, but it's still under the like the animal Whatever. Like the animal one. The animal argument also seems kind of like an argument removed from the debate. Like, yeah, maybe it's cool, it's a cool idea, but it might not be as directly uh, attached to the debate as some of the other stuff that was said. So that might, you know, that might have been uh, a step too far. But if you keep it within there, you can do it totally different. Yeah, I think this is his first one. Um, yeah. What's your signature Okay, so I'll. Uh, Oh, yeah, like, 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 I guess if you're coming with principles, you have to decide what principle you want to stand on. So are we on the side of you? Or do you want this to be the right way? Well, fight you! That that well, what happens is, um, yeah. you uh, you seem to have like two different kinds of thoughts. On one side, you're trying to be like, you know, more like, great. No, two sides are like fighting each other. So, I guess as you're conceptualizing or coming with a principle, you guys try and say, this is, this is us. We're these people. We believe in this sort of thing. And then every decision or argument you make is under that. What would this kind of person say to that? You know, would this sort of person force them into it? Probably with this sort of person, you know, where would they stop the experimentation? And then what benefit would this sort of person? That would be just as consistent as Yeah. Even if that is taking a hard step. Sure, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, and that's fine too. Like I said, I'm not trying to tell you, just because that's what I would do, I'm not going to tell you that's how you should do it. But if you had, but you saw like, you would have to do it. I think we're going to try to hear it. Oh, I have one of those good screens that's better than an idol. You can't identify why you're doing what you want. Who's going to bring it to you? You can't direct the line. Thank you so much Ask for you. Clay yeah, yeah. coming out and helping us. Yeah, no problem. Well, yeah, it was really great. A lot, a lot of like, amazing yeah. insights. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah. I think that helps. It's so good. Well, now you guys are uh, certified to go.
I can like read Ryan Kindergarten. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll,
team is not going to get food, but the I... Going over there's some place called the dorm. It's, it's the dorm. Uh, oh, okay, whatever. It's, Anyways, I'm going to go yeah. and get actual food. All right, yeah. Did you want to come with us? Uh, I'm, I'm okay. I no. should probably head back. All right. Um, I'm good. I'm going back. I have no idea how long it's going to take, apparently. <laughs> I thought traffic on Saturday would be fine, like especially Easter weekend. I thought it'd be okay. And, yeah. You know, there were two accidents though. When I got on like the ten, I was like, okay, I didn't know how much. I, I opened up the maps and it was like, oh, big red dot, oh, big red dot. Yeah, we had two accidents from our side too. Yeah. Yeah, it was a U-turn and you guys have a ways to go tonight. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so I don't we love it. Uh, Bedford County. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I don't know. Off of the direction though. Yeah. Nice little. Okay, um, and I, yeah, here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to tonight put up the debate on YouTube, but not the other stuff. Okay, sounds good. Because it's too, too many little small stops and sparks. I'll try to get it to people individually. Okay. You guys have a whole digital setup, don't you? Yeah. So that's cool. Do you guys have special equipment for that, or do you just change it to some home? Or how you no, know? UCLA department has, okay. has a... A YouTube account, so. But, so you upload it here? Yeah, I, upload, I have to upload it from here, yeah. Oh, okay. oh, you have, I thought you could do it from home, right? Oh, no. I tried it from home. It took nine hours for one debate. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Oh, no. I have to stay late here and do it. Yeah. That's why you're always, always here. Yeah. That's why I'm always here. Yeah. It's nice to have the uh, option, though. No, it is. It's nice. Yeah, it's nice.